Hey everyone, I'm Blue. And remember the early 2000s when Disney animated movies were flops and Pixar was doing better than them in every conceivable way? Well, now Disney not only owns them, but they own Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Fox, minus their laughable news station. This could have come at a worse time, as streaming services are the new hotness in entertainment, and with every company making one along with a huge catalog of content in their pockets, Disney has now opened Disney Plus, another service to add on the ever growing monthly bill of streaming services. Well, not for me, suckers. I'm only using the 7 day free trial, and after that, I'm becoming a pirate. But before we get our blunderbusses and eye patches, let's see if Disney Plus is worth the price to the simpletons out there. Starting with the user interface, navigation works really well, which is expected from one of the biggest entertainment companies out there. What isn't expected from one of the biggest entertainment companies out there is having the 90s Spider-Man cartoons episodes severely out of order, the first episode listed is a part 8, having older Simpsons episodes aspect ratio stretched to fit the entire screen when they weren't supposed to be shown in that way, making the episodes look worse than they would be on DVD, and the finicky video player that makes me to sound like Reggie Claus whenever I talk about it. There's still work to be done on the service as as a whole, but overall, it's serviceable for a launch. Not ideal, but serviceable. But you didn't buy slash pirate Disney Plus for the navigation, you got it for the content on the platform. We'll talk about the originals at the end of the video, but for now, let's discuss some of the notable movies and shows from the past that ended up on the service. The first two Home Alone movies are just my favorite Christmas movies, but some of my favorite movies of all time, so it's nice to see them on the surface at launch. They also have the atrocity that is Home Alone 3 on there, but thankfully Home Alone 4 and 5 didn't make the cut, so children are safe for now. Phineas and Ferb in its entirety are on the service, and that's one of my favorite cartoons, along with it getting a Disney Plus original movie next year at the unfortunate expense of Milo Murphy's Lost Season 3, but hey, I'm willing to give the movie a chance. I started watching X-Men Evolution on the surface, and it's surprisingly good, despite it being drenched to that early 2000s edge. And that's about all the backlog I've seen during my time with Disney Plus. I mostly focus on the originals of my 7 day free trial since I can easily get the older stuff on digital and DVD, but it's a robust lineup of content with more to come. But now we move on to the original Disney Plus programming. First up is Forky Asks a Question, a series of humorous shorts that revolve around Forky from Toy Story asking questions. Not only are these shorts adorable, but I can see this series providing infotainment to small kids, specifically with the Buddy episode, so hopefully we'll get more of that in future shorts. But either way, I still like these shorts and would give them a recommendation. The world, according to Jeff Goldblum, is way better than the toys that made us, and I'm totally not saying that because I'm pissed off from the God Awful Power Rangers episode. Anyway, each episode is Jeff Goldblum unraveling the history of whatever he feels like, such as sneakers or ice cream. This is a very fun documentary series that I can put on the background while working, or give my full attention to, but either way, I'm still having a good time. You can tell Jeff is having a good time interviewing people and exploring the places he ends up in, which makes for great infotainment. Check it out if you have the chance. For the final original I'm discussing today, we have The Mandalorian, the first live-action Star Wars show written by Jon Favreau. As someone who's mainly attracted to Star Wars spin-off content and really likes the bounty hunter characters found in Star Wars, I was excited to check this series out, and it didn't disappoint. Not gonna delve into the story since I don't want to spoil it, but I will say that the show does a great job of balancing show versus tell, the production design and special effects work is the quality you expect out of a Lucasfilm movie, and you can tell that this is something the people behind the scenes are really happy to be working on, which, in an infectious way, makes me happy. This is definitely the star attraction of Disney Plus Originals. I mean, what else are you gonna watch? High School Musical, The Musical, The Series? I was shocked, inspired, and triggered as a millennial. Overall, Disney Plus is okay. Netflix is still better in nearly every way, but if they fix their problems with the episode orders and bad video player and keep adding things in, it might be comparable to Netflix, but as of now, it's an okay novelty product for Disney fans. But I'm not gonna need Disney Plus anymore, so it's time to go kai change! See ya later, me hearties! I'm gonna go join the Media Pirate Crew!